Now, there's a newer feature that's been added to Reaper 7.40. So if you're using an older version, make sure you update to get this functionality. So the project set up here, and I want to create an edit. I have a chorus going into a post chorus and then a verse. Let's see what it sounds like. A part of me wants you to see. A part of me hopes that you won't look in the mirror to find me. Then after the chorus goes into the post chorus. Before you ever know gone before you ever know. So I want to skip this part and go right into the next verse. Come before you ever know. So I'm going to create an edit and delete this section. I'll zoom in and find the first edit we want to make. Hit the S key to create a split and do the same thing at the beginning of the verse. Before you ever know. So now, this is a section we want to delete. I'll turn ripple editing on in the toolbar, hit delete. It deletes that section and moves this section over. Let's turn this off. Let's zoom in. And here we have our edit. Let's make it a crossfade. Let's hear it. Of course, it's not perfect, but we could adjust it in here. But now in Reaper 7.40, we could tweak the crossfade in the crossfade editor. Let's double click right here, opens up the crossfade editor. And let's go through this new dialog. Up here, we have the view of what our edit is going to look like. Here's the left side, and here is the right side. Down here, we have the left side over here. This is a section we're going to use. This is a section we're not. And over here is the right side. Here's the section we're not using, and here's the section we are, which brings up the best use of this editor as it allows us to see the sections we're not using. So if we wanted to move the right side to line up with its transient, we could do it in here and see the result. Here's the right side, and here is the left side. We could zoom in with the mouse wheel. We could adjust the size of our crossfade on this side or this side. We can grab in here to keep the size the same while moving where it's placed. Or we can go over here or over here to adjust the size while keeping the middle or the crossfade point the same, like this. So let's hear what this edit sounds like. And we can hear it within the editor by hitting the spacebar, as the actions in this window are all separate from the rest of Reaper, which we can see if we open up our actions by hitting the question mark, opens up our actions, and we can see. We have a different section now, just for the crossfade editor. So we could have different keyboard shortcuts in here. Take note, our spacebar is right here, and the P key will allow us to preview while adjusting the pre and post playback. So if we hit the P key over here, it starts playback from there. Or we could hit it on this side to adjust the post playback or post roll. Let's hit it right here so we can hear our crossfade. And we could adjust it to be longer or shorter. We could adjust the fade type by right clicking, adjust our fade on the left side or the right side, or adjust both down over here. It defaults to equal power. We could change it to linear or any other options we want. Or we can just grab it right here and adjust our fade that way. But you notice both sides are changing at the same time. If we don't want that and we want a different fade out and a fade in, we could turn off link fade in and fade out edits. So now we could have a different fade out on this left side and a different fade in on the right side. Let's put it back so they're linked. So adjusting one adjusts the other. And again, we can move both sides together or adjust it by keeping the center of the crossfade at the same point. Forever, 
which is right here. And again, use the mouse wheel to zoom in or out. And we can see our transients of the pieces we're not using to line up our crossfade, either on this side or on this side. We'll just use our ears. It's a bit too quick. Hit the P key to change where we preview from. Gone before you ever know. Bit too quick. Gone before you ever know. That feels better. And if you notice over here, there's a phase alignment readout letting us know if there's any phase issues during our crossfade. And if we want to adjust those, we can change it right here based on the left item position or contents or the right item position or contents. So if I choose this, it moves the contents of this side to be more in phase, before or after. I think it sounded okay, like that. Gone before you ever know. Now over here, we can recenter what we're seeing. But by default, it's recentering automatically, which we can change with the options menu. Right down here, it recenters after each mouse edit. If you don't want that, turn it off. And now when we move our edit, it doesn't recenter our screen. If we want to recenter it manually, just hit this button to do that. Or leave this on or use continuous auto center, which is going to center this edit as we're editing the crossfade. On this side, this side, moving it this way, or moving it this way. It adjusts it on the fly. But by default, it recenters after the mouse edit. So when we adjust it, it recenters it right after. Gone before you ever know. Make this a bit quicker, make this a bit smaller. Gone before you ever know. Let's reset this to its default equal power. Gone before you ever know. Trying to think of something. Gone before you ever know. That sounds pretty good. We could also solo the course faded items, which only matters through other tracks in this project. In this case, there's not. You could also mute the left side or the right side to just hear one side at a time. Gone before you ever know. So you can really hear the fade out you're creating. Or the fade in. No. Or here both. And again over here, we have this options menu, which by default will show any combined peaks up here. So if we turn this off, we just see the left and right side, not the combined. Turn it back on. We can see the fades in the peaks. We can display the phase alignment we could use mono peaks if you prefer, which can be more helpful for lining things up by the transient. We'll keep them stereo. We could auto zoom peaks or apply fades to peaks or recenter, as I showed you before, or continuous, or even dock this window. Then we have our presets. It comes with one by default, which looks like this. But if you want to save your favorite ones, let's say we really like this one, we could save it, give it a name. At any point, we want to go back to my favorite, just choose it over here and reuse it in other crossfades. And if you want to try out different versions of each crossfade so you can compare, we could save them as snapshots. Go to our snapshots. We have four to choose from. Notice the keyboard shortcuts we could use as well. We could save this one. Maybe we want to change it up a bit and try a different option. Maybe something like this. Gone before you ever know. We want to save that snapshot right here. Let's try it another way. Maybe something like this. Save this one. And we could save 
four different ones. Make one like this. Save it as snapshot four. Now we can go back to each version we tried out. So we could save different ones to see which ones we prefer. Maybe this one. Long before you ever know. Or this one. Long before you ever know. Or this one. Or this one. But they're saved based on this crossfade. So if I clear this one and start it again, double click it, those snapshots go away. So it's really meant to try out different versions of each crossfade. So let's check out a different project. As you can see in this one, there's a bunch of crossfades, all very unique. As you can see, with different fade out and fade in, which I created earlier. But you also notice, not only is it on the vocal, it's on the drums, bass, and keys, where I have more crossfades. And because of this, we can jump from one to the other using the arrow keys in the crossfade editor. So let's zoom in really close and double click right here. That opens up the crossfade editor for that section. Hit the P key to start previewing from here. Let's zoom out a bit. Forget your rules, forget your shoes. So we can start from here or earlier. Forget your rules. And tweak this crossfade like this. But in addition, because we have more, we can use the arrow keys up here to scroll through our project to different crossfades. So if I go to the right, it goes to the next one, hit the P key to start previewing from over here and tweak this one. Move the right arrow again to go to the next one and so on. Or if there's ones below it, we can use the down arrow. Go down to my drum track or my bass track to preview each one. And to hear them better, just use solo course faded items and we'll just hear this track. Use the arrows up here, or use the arrows on your keyboard to jump to different ones. This is the drums, arrow up, to go back to our vocals. Get your shoe. And we just hear our vocals because it's soloed. On solo it to hear everything. Get your shoe. Arrow over to hear the next one. And we could also do it on the fly while it's playing, to jump to each section while they're all playing. And again, we could solo it so we could hear it better. So using the arrow keys, we can jump around to every crossfade in our project. In addition to using a mouse wheel to zoom in closer and out, we could also make the waveforms bigger, holding control on the PC, command on the Mac, like this, to make the waveforms bigger or smaller, to make them easier to edit. And it's not gonna make them louder, just makes them bigger in the crossfade editor. So that's pretty much it. That's the Crossfade Editor in Reaper. I hope you learned something, hope you can use it, and I'll see you next time. Thanks. Bingo boys, let's go. Mm -hmm.